In this video tutorial, we are going to head straight into After Effects to see what features we have and how we can start using it to create our animations. So when you open After Effects, you will find this user interface. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to create a new composition. You can click on this button or you can go to composition and new composition from here. And in here, we can give it a name just like that. And you can choose your settings. In this case, I'm going to use HD and 25 frames per second, just like that. You can give it your values in here and you can choose the frame rate right over there and set duration from here. Don't worry, you can even adjust this at a later stage. So let's click OK. A composition is a place where everything will take place. So you can drag and drop layers in here and start your animation right inside of this composition. So I'm going to import a footage layer in here. In this case, a footage layer could be different things like for instance, an image or even a footage. So I'm going to drag and drop this logo file, which is an image. So this could be a photo as well. So, and that's how you import, simply go to your explorer and drag and drop inside the project window. If the project window is not present in there, you can go to window and find project, just like that. So now drag and drop that inside the main comp. And there you go. You have the first thing going on here. So you have the logo, a very simple composition here, playing up in that composition. Right now, this logo is not animated, so it is like a still image. So I'm going to use a mask feature to make this logo circle to crop out the edges of this. So masks will come very handy and you can use masks by going to the pen tool and click the layer and to do a mask, you can like draw something in here. For instance, if I need to select that L of learn, you can do that by, by that. And as you can see, we have masked that layer so i'm going to undo this and i'm going to create a circle instead so i'm going to go to the shapes in here and select the ellipse tool perfect now i'm going to click somewhere around here hold shift on my key drag drag and hold shift on my keyboard so that it is a perfect circle i like it how it is but if you don't you can go to mask in here so you can open this like arrow in here to find the mask that you have created go to mask and click on in this case mask one double click on these tiny squares in here to move around just like that and even readjust the from the corner to readjust the size etc hold shift to keep its proportions etc so now uh, that i have my logo in a circle i am going to add some animation so to add animation in after effects we use keyframes let's open the transform properties from here so open transform and in here you have position, scale, rotation, and opacity. Opacity will stand for transparency, but we're the opposite to that. So 100% would be fully visible and 0% will be fully transparent. Undo, control Z on your keyboard to undo. I'm going to zoom in the timeline just like that. Perfect. I'm going to go to the one second mark in here and Basically, where the time is in here, the keyframes will drop and I will switch on the stopwatch on the scale and on the rotation. And this is where I would like the animation to end. So I'm going to go to the first frame in here, zero, zero. You can see the time indicator in here. And I'm going to start the scale from zero and I'm going to rotate, start the rotation from minus 360 degrees. If we hit zero on our key keyboard to preview, you can see that animating. Now, the only thing is that it's stopping a bit too harsh, as you can see. It's just like stopping immediately in there. I'm going to use the shortcut U on my keyboard. So hit U on your keyboard to reveal the keyframes that you have. I'm going to highlight all those keyframes and I'm going to hit F9 on my keyboard to smooth those keyframes. So and this will apply an easy ease like interpolation on these keyframes. There are more complex ways to do this by using the graph editor, but in this case, we're just using the F9 to keep things simple. Now it is much smoother, just like that, perfect. So now let's go a little bit further and duplicate this logo. So I'm going to go to this logo in here, go to edit and 
duplicate from here. You can also control D or command D on your keyboard to duplicate that. And now we have two layers of the same logo with the same animation, as you can see. I'm going to do that two more times. Now I have four layers. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the, the layer above this and move it two frames, pick this and move it uh, further two frames in here. So four frames in total and this one six frames in total, just like that. And play this to see how it works. Perfect. Now we can use a fill effect. So we can use the effects of After Effects, which will come in very handy on After Effects and will allow you to do many, many things. So to use effects, you can go to simply go to effect and find the effect from here. Or else you can bring in the effects and presets panel. So I like to go with this route, bring that in effects and presets. There it is. And find the fill effect in this case. So we can search for your own effects in here. And I'm going to drag and drop it on this layer in here. And as you can see, this layer, although it was the first layer that we had, it is showing behind the other layers. That is be because it is below the other layers. If I had to reposition it to be on top, it will be on top just like that. So let's undo that and leave that at the bottom. And as you can see, now that layer have taken the red color of this fill effect. I'm going to use the eyedropper in here to pick a different color, just like that. Perfect. Or maybe even like this color. Wonderful. And now I'm going to copy this fill effect, Control C or Command C on your keyboard and Command V on your keyboard to, to paste it. And I'm going to paste it over these two other layers. And now for this, I'm going to use the eyedropper as well. Go to Effect Controls. If that is not open, go to Window and find Effect Controls from here. And now I'm going to use the eyedropper and pick another color. Go to the next layer and pick another color, just like that. Now we have that nice animation going on with the colors. As you can see, it was quite easy to do. Use another feature of After Effects, which is the layer styles. So let's go to the last layer and I'm going to go to right click and go to layer styles. Now you won't see this, but at the bottom there is a layer style named stroke. I'm going to select that, click on that. And if I go to stroke in here from layer styles, you can access it from by clicking on that arrow, arrow, find stroke under layer styles and you can pick a color for this. So I'm going to pick this like dark blue color from the logo and you can increase the size of the stroke just like that. And you can see what it does. It basically creates an outline, a stroke with the outline of the logo. Perfect. I love how this is looking. It needs maybe a background in here. So let's add a background. To add a background, I'm going to go to Layer, New, and hit on Solid. It will create a solid for us. And if I click on Make Comp Size in here, it will resize it to be to the size of the composition. I'm going to rename this, hit OK, position it to below the logo. And now we have a background with the logo animation on it. I'm going now to pre-compose the logo. I'm going to place it basically into another folder in another composition, it's called. The reason is that if I pick this logo in here and move it around, you can see now we have messed up the animation since we are only moving one layer, since we have multiple layers in here. To fix that in After Effects, there is the ability to combine different layers together in one composition and use that as a single layer. Let's see how we can do that. So pick these four layers, right click and click on pre-compose. So you won't see this, but it is right below in here. Pre-compose. I'm going to rename this to logo animation, just like that. Move all attributes and I'm going to click on open new composition so that it will open it automatically for us. Click OK. And now, as you can see, those four layers are placed in another composition for us and are played right over here. Perfect. So now if I go back to main comp, we can see that we have that layer with the logo animation. So the composition in here. And now it is a single layer instead of multiple layers. And there it is playing up right there. And if we had to move this around, now as you can see, we can pick all the layers together just like that. 
wonderful. The first thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to add another layer style, which is a drop shadow layer style. So let's create that. So right click, layer styles and drop shadow. This is the first one here. Open the drop shadow and let's tweak some settings in here. Go to size and I'm going to increase that size just like that. Go to distance and increase a little bit the distance just like that. Perfect. And now let's pick the color of the background like that. And as you can see now, this logo looks a little bit 3D. We're almost done. Just one last thing. We need to add some text. So let's pick the text tool. Click where we would like to add the text and type in what you would like to, to type. So let's type in motion graphics. We can go to the selection tool in here to move that around just like that. Perfect. And I'm going to place it around here. We can align that to be in the middle by going to the align in here and align horizontally just like that. You can also access this from window and align in here to show this up right over there. And now we have the text and the logo. Let's animate this text now. So to animate it, I'm going to animate the position, hit P on your keyboard, and I would like it to, to end around here. So I'm going to create a keyframe by toggling the stopwatch on in here, going to the first, first frame in here, and I'm going to reposition it down like that. So it will start from this position and end at the, the last keyframe in here. Pick those keyframes and hit F9 on my keyboard to easy ease them. Perfect. And I'm going to position it this at a later stage. Now we are going to explore another feature. So track mats are a very important feature in After Effects and you will find yourself using them quite often. So let's see how we can do that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pick the rectangle tool and make sure that no layer is selected in here and I'm going to draw over this text. And like that, I have created a rectangle right over that text and as you can see now, the text is hidden. Now I'm going to go over the motion graphics, the text layer basically, and you can toggle the switches to make sure that you have the track mat in here visible and then go in this drop down menu and I'm going to select that shape layer, shape layer one that we have just created as a track mat, as a mat. And like that, as you can see now, it is our text layer is only showing when it is behind that rectangle. Let's preview that. Wonderful. And uh, we can also rename this shape layer so that we have everything organized in here to text mat. Now, another thing that we can do is animate the logo slightly so that we have some more interest in here, visual interest. So click on the pointer tool in here, selection tool, and uh, I'm going to go around here when the, te when the text starts to appear, go to the logo animation. Now, as you can see, all the logos are combined into one composition. I'm going to hit S for scale. So that will open up scale for us. You can also access that from the arrow and transform and scale in here. As you can see, there are no keyframes on this since this is the scale of the whole composition and not of the specific logo layers that we had in the other composition. So if we go and hit S for scale here, we will find those keyframes there. But since this is a new composition in here, it doesn't have any keyframes in this. So I'm going to toggle the stopwatch on in here and uh, place another keyframe in here. Add keyframe just like that. Go to the end keyframe in here. You can move through keyframes like this. As you can see, it will go to the next keyframe. And I'm going to resize it and scale it down a little bit, just like that. And select all those keyframes. And like we do usually do, we easy ease them by hitting F9 on our keyboard. Perfect, so let's close that and let's play this to see how that looks. So let's go to the background go to effects and presets and let's type ramp gradient ramp in here and drag and drop that over the background you have that ramp now i'm going to hide this this effect like that to pick my colors 
and I'm going to make them the same for now, just like that. And now the end color, I'm going to make it a little bit darker and you can leave it like this or you can even go to a radial ramp instead from here and you can move. You can find these little pointers in here. If you can zoom out if you would like to see that properly and you can do that like that. You can use this little drop down menu in here to make it fit up to 100% again. Now our logo is basically done and I quite like it. So I would like now to render this out, to render that out. It's fairly simple. You're going to select the duration that you would like to render. So I would say that around four seconds would be enough in here. And I'm going to hit N on my keyboard. And that will move the end point. You can move it like that, or you can also hit N on your keyboard and the end point will move to the, the time indicator here. So to render, I'm going to go to composition and add to render queue. You can also, let's go back to main comp, you can also go to composition and add to Adobe Media Encoder queue. And this will open the media encoder for you. So here we go, we have that loaded up right over here. And now I can go immediately to the, to this in here, to the format. It will read that for us and format I'm going to use now ages 264 and uh, that's basically it you're going to to give it an output name in here and then output destination click save and if you have audio you can choose export audio export video tick down in there i would like i like to pick match source so that the resolution matches my composition and let's go a little bit more down in here and target bitrate if you go for something like 35, this will cover you for most web scenarios. So for YouTube and things like that, this is perfect. Use maximum render quality and hit on OK. And like that, you are set to go. Hit the green button and it will start rendering. And there, there it goes, it's already rendered for us. Perfect. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and it has given you an introduction to After Effects. Of course, we will go deeper into the software and show you more of its features and more of its abilities. So feel free to subscribe to see the next videos. We'll be releasing these weekly on this channel. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and keep notified about our future videos.